Let's talk about the heavens. A concordant search of the Revised Standard Version of the Bible discloses that the word sky appears 12 times. So the RSV has the word sky 12 times, but the word heaven or heavens occurs 750 times in the RSV. But in the New Revised Standard Version, sky appears 27 times, notably in Genesis chapter 1, where it never occurs in the RSV, and heaven occurs in the NRSV 698 times. So look at those numbers. The RSV has the word sky 12 times, but in the NRSV 27 times. RSV has the word heaven or heavens 750 times, NRSV 698 times. Why did it change? Both English words translate the same Hebrew and Greek words. As the Italian proverb puts it, traditore, traditore. Every translator is a traitor. As we've explored earlier, the English word heaven carries so many centuries of theological freight. A Bible reader does well to avoid it always and use sky, or even better, sky vault or sky vaults, unless completely implausible in context. Heaven is fine for our catechisms and our liturgies. It's not good for our Bible readings. Sky, or better, sky vault, will give us a better understanding of the experience of Ezekiel, the experience of Daniel, the experience of Enoch, and the experience of Jesus. The ancients did not have electricity to distract them with movies, TV, and computer games, folks. Biblical scholars realize that our ancient ancestors in the faith paid an incredible amount of attention to the earth with its life, its plants, and its animals, and to the sky with its animate beings, the stars and constellations. They knew and cataloged all these things quite extensively. The priestly conception of the world, the priestly cosmology, reflected in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 to chapter 2 verse 4a, written sometime in the 400s, in the 5th century BCE, should be familiar to most readers of the Bible. There, the earth is a flat saucer resting on pillars covered by a dome on the other side of which are waters. There is water and an underworld beneath the saucer as well. This was the Israelite view, more or less, of the cosmos in the 5th century BCE, before the Common Era, or BC, if you'd like. But this 5th century BCE Israelite perspective differed considerably from the latter 4th century BCE Hellenistic view of the universe, which came in with Alexander the Great and his conquests. For these Mediterranean neighbors, the Greeks or the Macedonians, the earth was a still and stable sphere located at the center of the universe and surrounded by the sun, moon, and five planets, also spherical in shape, which traversed around the earth in separate orbits on the inside of these sky vaults. Greek and Roman philosophers, as well as the fathers of the church, held this cosmological model, this cosmological opinion. Modern Western readers need to continually remind themselves 
of the impact Alexander the Great's conquest of the world had on everyone as it spread the Greek language and storehouse of Greek knowledge. It was Washington Irving's 1828 novelistic biography, The Life and Voyages of Christopher Columbus, a work of fiction, that spread the lie that until Columbus's time, everyone on earth believed that the world was flat. The ancients agreed that this universe was a closed system enclosed by a vault or firmament. The high god or gods lived on the other side, on the top of this firmament, this vault. And there was an opening that allowed access to the other side. That opening, of course, was located over the place where the deity's temple, the high deity's temple on earth, was located. In the Israelite tradition, this was Jerusalem. See, Jesus had to ascend to Sky Vault from Jerusalem since the hole was there and not in Galilee. Perhaps if Jesus had belonged to the Greek-speaking peoples, he would have ascended at Delphi. John the seer on Patmos and Ezekiel the prophet in Mesopotamia could travel through the opening also by means of experiences in alternate states of consciousness. As we have said, an everyday panhuman experience among more than 90% of the planet's population, according to anthropological studies. Indeed, ASCs were institutionalized into the social practices of 96% of the 486 small societies that were studied in the database of the Human Relations Area Files at Yale University. Hey, thanks for watching. Just continue the playlist for the next part of the study. If you have further questions, this is good. They will get addressed, so keep watching. If you found value, please subscribe, like, and share. As always, questions, comments, and criticisms are most welcome. God bless you.